Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. We're back to talk about the second, the second topic I have lined up for you guys today. But if you missed that first topic in the first 15 minutes of the show, I recap some of the Chip Shot segments and going over some comments made by the Cowboys and a comment made by CJ Stroud on the whole Justin Fields scenario issue going on with the Chicago Bears. But now I wanted to jump into the second segment that is revolved around Kirk Cousins and the Vikings and contract negotiations because I think the major feeling around the league was that these two could get a deal done because of the way last season ended. You know, Kirk was on fire. He threw 18 touchdowns and five interceptions in the little games that he played before he ruptured his Achilles. And I I just think that in that moment, once you knew the severity of the injury and everything like that, I feel like people felt that this, knowing that he was going to be a free agent, felt that this scenario could have been fixed pretty quickly just because it ended pretty fast for Kirk Cousins and it, it felt that the Vikings missed a good opportunity the way that Kirk Cousins was playing this season, arguably the best in um, in his career. He was throwing for 291 and a half yards per game. That's the highest he's thrown for since uh, 2016. And the way it was going, I know Justin Jefferson was hurt, but once you know they got back on the same page, everyone, or at least I thought that it was only a matter of time before they started rolling, started getting Justin Jefferson involved, and you know Kirk Cousins gets hurt, then you got to roll with Josh Dobbs, Nick Mullins in there at some point, and it never really got going for the Vikings. It was a missed opportunity on a pretty decent start to their season. But now, like I mentioned, Kirk Cousins is a free agent and one of the higher shot after free agents, I would think, because if you look at the names that could be available, it's him, Baker Mayfield, Ryan Tannehill, Russell Wilson now, uh, Justin Field, and whatever's going to happen with him. I think Kirk could be... Kirk or Baker could be one of the more stable guys and reliable players that you'd uh, want to sign if you're a team in that position. And because of not only how he was playing, but, you know, he's only 35. If you need a, a year or two even um, from Kirk Cousins, from any quarterback, I think he gives you the best chance of, of doing that. Granted, if you have the system already, great players around him, specifically a good old line to, to keep him protected from preventing any other injuries, I think could be a good thing for for any team if they wanted to get Kirk Cousins, but um, a report by Sports Illustrated read that the Vikings really like Kirk Cousins, but they won't hand him a fully guaranteed deal like he's had in previous years, and SpotRack uh, predicts that Cousins is around the range of getting a three-year deal, two-year deal with a 39.3 annual value, just outside the top 10 quarterbacks or highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. But it's going to be tough. Uh, that that amount of money might not be the issue. It's just the fully guaranteed part of it. The, I guess, the incentives, the, the smaller details in a contract that um, could be an issue here because I don't think the Vikings will have a problem paying Kirk Cousins that money. It's just depending on now he's getting older. Um, and Achilles injury is a pretty serious injury, not only just for any player, but for someone closer to the end than he is the beginning and prime years of his career. Coming off of that, seeing that they also have to pay Justin Jefferson a lot of money um, because he made some comments or some reports came out that he, that they think they believe Justin Jefferson would want to reset the wide receiver market and the top earner right now is Tyreek Hill at $30 million per year. And if you think Justin Jefferson doesn't think he's the best receiver in the league and deserves that amount of money or more. Um, you'd be crazy to think that because Justin Jefferson has proven to uh, to be one of the top three receivers in the league at his best, at his, best, at his healthiest. Um, it was a shame he wasn't able to prove that this past year uh, because of some of the injuries he was dealing with, but you have to pay Justin Jefferson down the line. You have some free agents. Um, this coming season and then not to mention the other season and this is where the decision making comes in for the Vikings and for um, Kirk Cousins because 
you know, I mentioned the, the Achilles injury and, you know, that, that security that the Vikings might not feel with Kirk Cousins coming off of that injury. On the other hand, Kirk Cousins might feel that guaranteed money now is even more vital to him because his health, like any other players, is their most important thing to them. And he wants to make sure that if something bad does happen to him, he suffers another injury, his money, his um, paycheck doesn't suffer from that as well because obviously you can't control the injuries and he wants to get assurance on his end as well. It's just going to come down if the Vikings feel like he's earned it. And, you know, Kirk Cousins has been there for about six years now. I think he's going into his seventh year. And, you know, he, he has made his mark there. There is some emotional ties, connections with him and the organization because of some success that he's had there, taking them to the to the playoffs and whatnot. Um, historically, he's third all-time in Vikings wins, and he's top three, at least top five in wins, or not wins, in passing touchdowns and just um, some other accolades like that. So it's, it's really give and take right now at this moment between the Vikings and Kirk Cousins. If they weren't get a, if they weren't to get a deal done, I think overall it might be worse for the Vikings if they weren't able to uh, to negotiate some sort of deal with Kirk Cousins because, like I mentioned, Justin Jefferson is tied with Kirk Cousins now. He's the quarterback that he's played with his entire career, and if you're trying to sell Justin Jefferson to the idea of staying here, making this your home for as long as possible, extending your your stay with the Vikings past your rookie deal. Um, there's no issue with the Vikings giving him his money. That I'm sure they'd be willing to give him probably as much money as he wants, but will Justin Jefferson be fully on board with what they're building here, the project, uh, the group of players, the, the roster, the coaching staff? Is he going to be on board if they're not able to assure him a quarterback that could make him look better uh, at the end of the day? If you don't have a high-level quarterback playing with a receiver, the caliber of Justin Fields, it, the receiver is going to benefit, not benefit, is going to not benefit uh, a lot more or a lot less than uh, than the quarterback. And then after that, um, it just affects not only how the league views them, but their future negotiations, their future um, things that they can bring to the table. Um, if they were to negotiate another deal, if they can't put up the numbers because they're in a bad situation, it's harder for them to get paid later on. So that's a few things that you have to think about here if you're the Vikings, if you're thinking about, you know, is, is Kirk Cousins really expendable? Is he really just another guy that we can find to have success with Justin Field because or Justin Jefferson? Because at the end of the day, like I mentioned, those other guys, uh, those other free agents, Baker Mayfield, yeah, I think he could be... He could be very good with Minnesota, and he might actually cost a little bit less than Kirk Cousins, but again, it's that process of not fully tearing it down and restarting with Justin Jefferson in the offense and building an offense. Now with Baker, who's a little bit more mobile, might have a little bit more arm talent, arm strength than Kirk Cousins, finding that rhythm with him, Justin Jefferson, um, and just the rest of the offense and playing off of that, are they going to have the level of success that they had um, I guess two seasons now uh, with them trying to get into the playoffs now more? The NFC North is, is only getting better in my opinion, regardless if Justin Fields stays with the, with the Bears or if they get Caleb Williams. The Lions are the presumably favorite, I would assume right now, to, to win the, the NFC North, but Everyone saw how the Packers played uh, with Jordan Love, how he wasn't afraid of the spotlight. He stepped up in the biggest of moments, and his inexperience cost, costed him in the, in the moment against the, the 49ers. But um, you can only assume he's going to get better. Their roster is young. They have a lot of cap space, and they have a lot of draft picks coming up in this year's draft to, to only improve that, that team that they had going. You know, get Jordan Love some more playmakers, some more... Um, old linemen to, to protect him and I think the rest he can do himself kind of carry them to the tougher wins just based on the talent and poise he showed in the playoffs and if you're the Vikings now you, you don't want to be left behind or you don't want to be in a scenario like like the Bears trying to find 
your franchise guy or not settling down on a franchise guy and being left behind while everybody else gets successful and you have a top tier wide receiver as well on your roster so you don't want his talents to go to waste and then him eventually moving on and then you not only don't get Kirk Cousins in that moment but you also end up losing Justin Jefferson as well. All these factors are things that the Vikings have to consider in their moment um, as well as just making sure that if they can negotiate something with Kirk Cousins, you know, the, the emotional ties are there, like I mentioned before. I think it won't be easy to um, negotiate a contract with Kirk Cousins and get him to take less money, maybe less years. Instead of three years, take two at, I don't know, maybe... I think you could work out 30 or 26 to 27 range. Um, with Kirk Cousins for a three-year, two-year deal. Um, I think anything more than that would be pushing it for all the reasons I mentioned before. And I think Kirk Cousins would understand that just based on, you know, the kind of person, the kind of quarterback that he's allowed everyone to see that he is. Um, I don't think he would make it a big deal. And if they can't get a deal done, he, they won't get a deal done. And there won't be any ill feelings about it. But Kirk Cousins right now, in the situation that he has with the Minnesota Vikings, it's kind of just stalled out a little bit. Obviously, it'll progress more with the NFL draft or the NFL Combine coming up, and then eventually the draft and free agency officially opening up, opening up, and just all these factors like Justin Jefferson, if he's going to come to a contract agreement, all this will affect the Vikings and their future plans moving on. Because not only do they have to figure out the quarterback situation, um, their own line is probably their best group of guys that they have there in Minnesota, but their defense could use some work. That secondary um, has been an issue since, you know, Patrick Peterson gave him one good last year with them where they were pretty good, but then he left, and then you were left with other guys that weren't really showing out the level of talent that you'd want from some of those draft picks. The, the linebackers as well could use some work and some pass rushing help to – how about Delaney Hunter, who, again, he is another player that is unsure if he's going to return to the Minnesota Vikings. I've seen some rumors that he could be traded or um, just lost to uh, free agency or not getting a contract extension done with him. So, assuring the quarterback would be huge for them, and they're going to have to eventually figure that out. And they're at a point, too, where they might have to give up something or really try to tie down one of these two guys like Jefferson, um, really tie him down, maybe even get his deal done first just to make sure he's tied in, he can't go anywhere, he's getting paid um, before figuring out these other touchy, delicate situations where if you get Cousins, you might not get this guy, or if you get this guy, Cousins might walk because there's not enough money um, to sign into a deal. So. That's where it stands right now with the Minnesota Vikings and Kirk Cousins. It would be great if he returned there because I think, um, like I mentioned, they were almost robbed to some extent this past season with the way he was playing. And I'm sure he kind of wants to show everybody that he still got it, that he was on great pace to have great numbers, and unfortunately he got injured. So I'm sure wherever he lands, I think, bearing it's not an abnormal amount of money that he'll prove to be a good investment for for any team that he lands on but we'll sh we shall see where that contract situation ends up in a few weeks few days who knows with with the offseason now going on uh when all these things will take place but that's going to wrap it up for segment two i'm gonna send it to a quick break and on the other side of that i'm gonna be talking some more free agency the running back market this time and some of the big name players and what their contract situations could look like with any teams that they might be going to, might be staying with, or just the whole situation overall. So don't go anywhere. It'll all be talked about after this break.